Hey, what? Program. Now this game is a pixel space exploration and base building game, and it's quite fun. So I'm just gonna get right into it. Now the question I've been asked uh, to make about this video only is how to put astronaut astronauts into space, and the simplest way to do that is actually I need a spaceship first by building a spaceship, putting on an astronaut. Actually, I'm going to show that a bit better. Now, down here, you can see a bunch of different menus. On the second, on from the right, is a rocket. If you press on it, you can see all of my different, well, spaceships and satellites I have right now built. And if I choose up here on the top that I want the moon lander, I get a menu on the left with four different options and a couple other things. Now, I have ship stats, which show me the fuel and the speed the range, cargo space, durability, and onboard. Now, what is actually important for the beginning is only cargo space and, well, for complete beginning, also only onboard, which means that there is an astro astronaut on the ship. Uh, the durability doesn't matter yet because it only matters if you want to use a single thing multiple times, while this is only one use ship. Now, on the middle, I have options. Uh, one is basically a flyby. The second one is landing, and the third one is to dock with Moon Space Station. But I don't have a Moon Space Station since this is a brand new account to show those things. I also have quick location like Earth and Moon, but I really don't need Earth since I start on Earth. Now to get back to the menu on my left, you can see that I have the items, which means I can buy, buy things from the market like life support. Also I can go here for the third from the bottom. And I can see that I have 10 astronaut, astronauts and I have one of them already in space as part of the tutorial and one of them is on the, I, I actually chose the satellite, sorry, on the ship already. I can change him, but that doesn't matter right now. And ship skins, which aren't available until the later ships. But I'm gonna choose the moon and land it there. And now the developer actually made a very nice cinematic of the rocket launching. Uh, we can see all the stage, stages of this rocket as the engines cut off and they separate as they fly into the space. But for the purposes of this video being shorter, I'm going to have to skip that. But I, well, I said, I mean, it's a cool cinematic. You can watch it. I had fun watching it. And I usually also watch it since longer flights take longer time, so there isn't a free skip. Now, once I'm on the moon, I have a bunch of different options, and the most visible one is, of course, the ship. Actually, the most important one for now, since the Earth returns me back to Earth. Planet just gives me some information on workers' vehicles and, well, stuff that really isn't important yet. I have also have research, which is a bit later on and over again doesn't help me yet and ship now here i can of course choose different things and the most basic ones are these tasks like basic sampling basic atmospheric measurements area scan seismic scan and of course the stone samples now i'm gonna send this one to sell, sell, uh, to pick up stone samples and the first rocket will go Basic sampling. Now, I suggest you do this every time you land on a new planet. It gives you credit and sometimes tech points. And tech points are useful, are useful for research. For instance, the first thing you should research is the bullet. Now, the bullet is a new rocket, gives you more fuel, a larger range, and, and also it gives you... Well, it, you can put more people on it, two people, and it has nine, cap nine weight capabilities. Or have they finished yet? No, they haven't. And it basically means you can carry more stuff from planet Earth, where you can in shop buy different things. Now, when you start, you actually have a lot of money for the beginning, but you can also go to quests and collect them. Collect a lot of different quests. And let's see, okay, my next mission underneath quest tab is bring back your spaceship to Earth after landing on the moon. 
Now, how long will they take to finish there? 47 seconds, okay. I can also then make him do something else while that thing is running. And I'm gonna just pause the video until it gets there. Okay, now I can see it here underneath the second from the bottom tab called items on the planet. I can then transfer my single rock back to the ship and because my mission is to send it back to the earth, I'm going to send it back. Now to travel back, it actually needs a bit more time. So I'm just going to do crystals for the purposes of the video, but you can just wait. It works even when you're offline. Now my pilot, well, astronaut has been returned so I can use it again on a different mission. While my space rock is actually in my inventory. And well, right now I can sell it for 48, but the more I sell, the less their value is. It basically means you can just make infinite money by taking three every time you launch a ship and bring them back, making 50 profit each time because the, their prices drop, their value drops because the more you sell it, the more common it is on Earth. But for now, it gives me quite a nice amount of profit. So, well, I've built my bullet. Actually, I researched it, so now I can build it. And I have a bigger and better ship. But before I do that, I have a satellite. Now I can set it to anywhere inside my solar system, as long as it's inside this thicker white circle, which is range of the current craft. I can send it, for instance, to the... Well, it doesn't say the name, but yeah. I can send it to Mercury, Venus, Mars, Mars also one to be the fastest, but currently... Yeah, Mercury is the closest one right now. I'm going to inspect it. But it's still going to take, yeah, three minutes just to get there. And now it's scanning. Mercury, it's about, at, well, it takes some time. Five minutes, maybe more. But when it scans it, you can also then send ships, other ships to there, or just get some tech points to research. I can research a better rover. I can upgrade my ship's range or even the engine to make it more fuel efficient or just off-world research, which is a late game item. It basically means that after I craft my outpost, I can build better stuff at my outpost. Now, this game gives you a very detailed quests, telling you exactly what to do. For instance, my next thing is setting up a base and it tells me exactly what I need. Five building materials, two tools, and at least one pack of life support. Do I have enough money for all of that? Nope, not at all. But if I were to finish these ships collecting rocks and all of these, I would get approximately enough money to do that. Or maybe just send another, another bullet to pick up more rocks. But, and actually two astronauts on the bullet, so they would collect rocks faster. But then I should also put some life support in it. Now, this game is pretty straightforward in the beginning. All you have to do is send ships into space until you actually earn enough money to send bigger and better ships. So I did that and now I'm going to show you how it looks when you play for a couple of hours. So this is my progress. The base actually looks the same on Earth since it doesn't change. But I've played for a while now. Oh, actually, I got 500 credits. Okay, so basically I've played for a couple of hours, researched some new things, so I'm going to show now what the progress looks a bit later. Uh, you upgrade stuff as you go progress, you should check up what you actually need to upgrade uh, to save up your tech points and money. Um, as you can see, there are other different types of shifts later on. What I will say is that single-use supply craft is very useful if you need to... I'll send a ship somewhere to build an outpost. Like I used it to build my, um, yeah, I already built my Mercury base for now. And since I can't actually leave Mercury for now, I'm gonna show that actually, that's Phobos, Moon, Mercury, here we go. So the only way I can get to Mercury as it is currently is by using the smallest ship because that's the only one that's light enough for my astronauts to actually reach mercury in one go so i currently have one ship and a small base and the only reason why i could actually build this base using only one ship 
was by simply sending a supply craft, carrying all the necessary items for him to build. And also the other very good ship to use is a Bullet Mark II. It has 15 space for the storage and 3 astronauts. I'm actually using it on the moon. Oh, actually I had to send a resupply ship, but... Oh no, this is actually a normal ship. I sent it for reasons, I guess. I can't remember why I sent another ship up here, but it's... No, I didn't send even a worker. Okay, so apparently I sent a ship and I don't remember why. But here I can show some of the stuff on the Mercury, how it looks in the beginning. Now here where I have the craft button, the second one from the right, you can al always just press that before you have a base and it will allow you to build, give you an option to build it. But to build it like this, you have to put all of your items from your ship's storage into the planet and it will automatically detect them and let you just... Well, it will just simply let you build it easily. But also you have to put an astronaut, astronaut here. Now, there are probably better ways to get to Mercury, like using Phobos, which is right here. And the way you should do that is by following their quests, because that's what they're meant. But I kind of ignored them, so I first went to Mercury, then Phobos. Now, to actually show it what Phobos is, is simple. Phobos is one of the Mars's moons, and what you should use it for is by building a base where you can refuel. For my example, that's not actually very useful. I should have built a base on Venus, but I built a base on Phobos since they told me to. And the idea for it is to send a ship, which would land on Phobos, and then to send it forward back to Jupiter, Jupiter, <coughs> where I would then research Jupiter and its moons, which later on as well well i've got four more planets I, I thought wait a second there are four in the middle one two three no okay yeah i, I was just counting wrong i thought they put pluto as a planet as well but yeah there are currently only one solar system as far as i can see and you can also turn off the scale making them all equally apart but i keep it on the realistic scale because it's well more logical and cooler now, the way you also build stuff after you have built, actually this is Phobos, I need Mercury. Here we go. Is by selecting this bottom part and you can build stuff like workshop, uh, hyperdronics and landing pad. Now these three are the most important for the start. If you have a hyperdronics, you can take a worker, which gives you one, it gives you one life support per hour. The more you have, the maximum of three, the more you can get per hour and then you can upgrade it. The workshop lets you build stuff like iron ingots. I can't show them here, but I can build iron ingots and different ingots, fuel, vehicle parts, and also just assemble vehicles, because without the workshop I can't do that. And the landing pad lets me refuel. Like I have them right now, my rocket is... I actually swiped the wrong way. Where's my... Oh, there we go. My rocket is just simply standing there on the ground, while on moon it's parked here and if I had any fuel or reason to refuel the ship, I could refuel it and send it forward, but since the moon is so close, the ships usually have... Yeah, they, I just spent three and a half fuel to get here, I still have most of the fuel left. I could basically just take fuel out of the ship and I'll still have too much. And as you can see, the durability of the ship did went down by a bit, but since the ship will be discarded on Earth, it doesn't matter. I mean, it can if it lands with one, it's still okay because it landed. Now, when it does start to matter is that the reusable space flights, and this is Dragon. This is the... Well, I think it's... I think it's taken by the design from the Elon Musk's rocket, but I'm not sure. I'm not saying it, it is, but it's meant to be a resupply, you just land it, refuel, massively repair it, and you can launch it again, saving you some of the build costs. But other than that, well, that's the only point of it. Now for the off-world exploration, it allows you to build this thing, planetary operations then. Uh, using this, I can build in mines and send my workers 
to work in them, but I don't have currently any. So right now my workers are working my life support production and I have one in crafting module. So he builds me stuff. Now I do have a ship. I still don't know why I built, no, I don't want to refuel it. Why? I don't know why I placed the ship here, but you see here, I can make five different resources and different things I can do with them. Uh, steel ingot the most useful because I can build more rover parts out of them and I need them to build rovers. Now, the more you research, the better ones you get. My plan is to finish this game before the next upgrade comes, but I don't think that will happen. And here you can see that I can upgrade the its production and its storage. And that's about it. Uh, well, for now at least, because the developer says, actually here in the settings, that he is planning to add many more features such as space station colonies, astronaut perks, and many more spaceships, meaning that this game will get upgraded, updated in the future. And whenever the next huge upgrade com update comes, I don't know why I keep saying, saying upgrade. Whenever the next huge update comes, I'll be making a new video about it, explaining how it works. So I have to grind until then so I can afford it. I hope you had fun and that my video helped. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and write down in the comments which game should I do next or should I do more of Tiny Space Program. Have fun!